All right, we have two more examples for solving. Um, we're gonna make things a little bit more simple by only finding solutions on the interval zero to two pi. So that'll help us eliminate some of those extra solutions. Um, it might be tempting to divide by sine squared here, um, but just like when we solve x to the fourth equals x squared, um, we would move x squared and factor instead because we don't want to lose solutions. So I'm going to move sine squared to the other side. So don't divide because you'll lose a solution. Move to the other side and factor. So we can factor out a sine squared. And so we're left with sine squared minus 1. Um, this one might be easier to factor, but you could write it as u squared minus 1, so you'll get u plus 1 and u minus 1. Right, it's a difference of squares. So we'll get sine of x plus 1, and we'll get sine of x minus 1, all equals 0. So we have three things to solve, which means we could have three or more solutions. So sine of x equals 0, or sine of x squared equals 0. Let's just do one at a time. Where does sine equal 0? Um, it equals 0 here and here. So 0 and pi. And then I don't have to do the plus 2k two pi, two pi, because we're only looking at this interval. So then 2 pi would also be included. And then 3 pi would be included, but it's not in the interval. So three solutions right there. Um, sine of x plus 1 equals 0, which means sine of x equals negative 1. Where does that happen? It's the y value, so that would be 3 pi over 2. All right, and last one. Sine of x minus 1 equals 0, so sine of x equals 1. And that would just be up here, which is pi over 2. And so those are my solutions in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. All right, let's do one final example. Um, we can't factor this as is because, again, we have different angles, right? We have 3 theta and 2 theta. You can't factor out a 3 or a 2 or a cosine. They're just different functions. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sum to product identity. So go peek back and see if you can find those. The reason I'm going to use this one is I currently have a sum. So maybe if I convert it to a product, it'll turn into something better. So go back, see if you can find the right identity. Um, so it tells us we have cosine of x1 plus cosine of x2 is 2 cosine of x1 plus x2 over 2. All right, we're not memorizing this, we're just using that. And then the second one is cosine of x1 minus x2 over 2. So in this case, we'll use 3 theta for x1, and we'll use 2 theta for x2. And then this is nice because a product, we can solve them when they equal 0. So products are better in this example. So 2 cosine of 3 theta plus 2 theta over 2. So cosine of 5 halves theta. And then cosine of, oops, 3 theta minus 2 theta over 2, which is cosine of theta, or let's do 1 half. 1 half theta equals 0. And a product is better because now I can set each of these equal to 0, right? If a, b equals 0, then a equals 0, or b equals 0. So that's why a product is better here. All right, and these are going to get a little ugly. All right, so let's do cosine. When does cosine equal 0? 
So that would be vertical because it's the x value. So it'll be at pi over 2. It'll be at 3 pi over 2. Um, I'm going to actually list out more than these options because the coefficient's going to maybe make there be more possibilities. Um, so 5 halves theta could be pi over 2. Could be 3 pi over 2. Um, it could technically also be 5 pi over 2. Um, we'll worry about the interval at the very, very end. But because we're going to do some dividing, we might need more options. And you'll see why when we get through the end of this. Um, I'm going to list out just a couple more, maybe more than I need. Um, it could be 7 pi over 2, um, 9 pi over 2, and I'll stop at 11 pi over 2. But I'll put some dots just in case. Um, it, right now you don't know why I'm listing out so many, but I'll show you why. So remember it was 5 halves theta equals all these, not theta. So I'm going to have to multiply by 2 and divide by 5. And so that might make more solutions that are like smaller than 2 pi. So we're going to multiply all of these by 2 fifths. So pi over 2 times 2 fifths gives me pi over 5. 3 pi over 2 times 2 fifths gives me 3 pi over 5. The two fifths and the five halves cancel out, so that's pi. Seven pi over two and two fifths gives me seven pi over five. Keep going. Nine pi over five. I know, we're probably like, what? Why are we doing so many? Eleven pi over five. And I know I'm done because there's no more that are bigger than two pi. So 2 pi in terms of 5 would be 10 pi over 5. So 11 pi over 5 is out of the interval. But I actually needed all the other answers. So there's a lot of solutions. So because we divided by 5, um, it made there be more solutions. Because we're basically, um, right, 2 pi, a full circle divided by 5, is only a fifth of a circle. So it's just creating more solutions. So if you have a coefficient, just list out extra options. Until the end. And then once I do the division, I can kind of get an idea of where to stop. All right, we still have to solve the other one. All that only for this. So cosine of 1 half theta equals the same thing. So we'll say 1 half theta. Um, it's the same angles, right? Because it's still equal to 0. So it'll be pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and I'm going to list out less. You'll see we don't need them. And so this one I'm actually going to multiply by 2 to solve. So theta equals pi, theta equals 3 pi. Uh, is 3 pi bigger than 2 pi? Yeah, so this one, we're done, right? Those will all be bigger as well. So our final solution is pi. So cosine, oops, so uh, theta can be pi over 5, 3 pi over 5, pi, 7 pi over 5, and 9 pi over 5. And it just happens to be a coincidence that pi showed up in both. Um, that won't always happen. And we could check our work. I think because this problem's so long, I'm just going to check on the calculator. So I'm going to check in the original. And let's see. Um, I'm not in radians. Just because this problem was so long. Um, so we'll do 3. Let's try pi over 5 first. Pi over 5 plus cosine of 2 pi over 5. And then let's hope it's 0. Eh, it's basically 0. Um, it's probably just a rounding issue on the calculator. Am I in a weird mode? Um, we can do cosine. This is basically zero because it's zero, right? 16 decimal places. We could do cosine of 3 times 3 pi over 5. So that'll be oops, 9 pi over 5. 
and then plus cosine of 6 pi over 5, 2 times 3. Yeah, also 0, right? Because again, that's like lots and lots of zeros. Um, we could also plug into this version just to check. So we'll do 2 cosine 5 halves. Let's do the 5 pi over 5. 5 halves times 5 pi. Oops. Times pi over 5 times cosine, it's really slow to type on here, type on here, one half times pi over five. Okay, oops, I see, sorry, I made one typo. It was five halves, not five times five. Honestly, sometimes the calculator makes it worse because it's so easy to make typos, and we get zero. So just ways to check your work, especially on these really ugly ones. Um, this was a lot of work for, I don't know if it feels that important, but you will need to solve these types of equations in calculus. So hopefully this helped. Um, be patient. It's really easy to maybe take the wrong strategy. If you start solving and it's a mess, maybe try something else. Um, so just practice this key here. All right. See you later.